Hi, and welcome to this session on what's new in financial management on reminder automation. My name is Brian Nielsen. I'm a program manager in the Business Central team. And in this session, we'll focus on the improvements we've done to collection management, which is a, a key part of any finance department. In this release, we'll look at the new role center we have done for account receivables administrators. We'll look at the new automation for reminders, and we'll look at how we've improved the setup of reminder terms. So let's just jump right into it. Here I am in my new role center. Uh, it's called account receivables administrator, and you can select that role center and you'll get a role center uh, targeted for account receivables employees and users. So the role center has all the navigation that you need um, to post a document to new documents in sales, uh, of course to the reminders, and it has a, a small group of reports that you often use in connection with account receivables. And we also added some of the new Excel reports that might be uh, useful to look into when you're doing collection management, for example. The yeah. account receivables report is one. We've added some queues that you know from other role senders. And then we added a set of queues for the reminder process. Um, Cues for knowing how many have been created, how many have been issued but not paid yet, how many have been issued but not sent yet. And then we have the uh, automation uh, cues. In this case, I've set up three automations. We'll get back to them in a second. And we'll also be notified about uh, failures in these automations so we can take action. And then at the bottom of the page, we have the list with overdue balances for customers, and we have the overdue invoices, so it's easier to, to get access to them. Let's take a look at the automation that happens, because ideally you should just be following along on your KPIs and see maybe what's happening uh, in terms of reminders being here, but the process it itself should be done uh, with automation. So in this company, we have three automations. Uh, you can combine them or you can split them up. You'll, you'll see that in, in a second. All of these in this demo is uh, set up as manually executed automation um, pieces. But of course, you can set it up so it, it always runs automatically and you don't have to intervene at all. In this case, I have set up uh, an automation for reminders. I can uh, set a, a reminder terms filter. That is the main filter when you're doing reminders. In this case, I, I just set it for the existing two reminder terms I have. And then you can set up some steps that define how, how are they created. In this case, there's only one step and it basically says, create anything, it's a create step and uh, include only entries with overdue amounts. So we will create a reminder, it will only contain the overdue amount. It won't contain a section with the not yet due open uh, invoices. So that's the selection we've done. Uh, we have one more on issuing. Once you have created them, you can go and validate them. Maybe you want approval for, from somebody. And the next step is issuing reminders. For issuing, there really isn't much to do. You can set a filter again. This issue reminder step that I've set up here, or automation I've set up, will only take the ones that have a reminder terms filter with domestic. So it will leave the, the foreign uh, reminders uh, for another batch job or manual intervention. The, uh, the, the action step here also has a setup, slightly different from the create, because so, these are some of the options you can, can take, replacing posting date and uh, tax date or VAT date, and then again you can do a, a, a filter here. The filter is really useful if you have a lot of reminders for different groups of, of receivables, in that you can set a filter, and one of the filters that are very useful to do or to include is a reminder automation code. And that means that I will only if I set a filter for this, I would only pick up the 
reminders, uh, open reminders that were created with a specific uh, reminder automation code. So I can, I can have multiple jobs generating uh, reminders, and I can have issue reminder jobs that pick groups of uh, these reminders and then issue them. So it can be, uh, it can be pretty uh, flexible tailored. We'll leave the filter for, for this one and close it. And then we have the last one. Once we have issued it, we can choose, it, choose to send it. And with send, we can uh, open up the step. With send, you can choose to send multiple times for the same level. Maybe useful for, for the first level. You want to be nice and not bump them up in reminder levels and, and get a little more professional in your address. Uh, to them. You can uh, choose to show um, interest and show amounts that are not due and whatnot. You can lock the interaction and then um, the best option is sent by email so it doesn't just get printed out. And we've added a new option so that you can attach invoices that are referenced in the uh, reminder. You can either have all of the um, invoices like all of the open ones or only the ones that are overdue and then include them. We'll see that in, in a second. It's pretty flexible in the, in the setup. You can combine them in one. We could have done one automation here um, and I should probably open this one again. You can see there's a step called scheduling. I didn't show it. So this one is set up for manual because I want to, to, to show different steps uh, for you. But you can set it up to be weekly, monthly, or a custom schedule. And you can even have it uh, like by day. And just w whenever there's something to be processed, there will be a batch job to process it. We'll, we'll just flip it back to manual so we are in control of it. I have some customers and there's overdue balances. So it's, it's only fair that we do uh, remind us. So easiest way is to go here. And here we have them. So let's just start the first batch job in creating reminders. It only takes a few seconds. We can go in and take a look. You can see it's already completed. You can look at the log entries and you can drill further down to it. And you can see that two reminders were created from this automation. And this could have happened uh, automatically. And we'll just go and check and see what was created. So we have some reminders, two of them created for two different customers. School of Fine Art has the highest balance or oh, amount. There's a few invoices there. And the next step in, in the reminder process is, um, is issuing them. Now we have just created them. So we'll go into the issue reminder again. And then we'll start this batch job. And again, you can go in, look at the log entries, but we'll skip that part and we'll go directly to, um, to sending them. And we'll start that batch job. And again, all of it can be done fully automatically. And then we'll go in and look. We could also go from the list, log entries. And we'll take a look. Four reminders were emailed. And that is because we created two but as you saw in the queues on the role center, I had already created two and they were not yet emailed. So this batch job, because they were run with the same automation, it will pick them up and, and then send them. And that is all right. Let's go back and look at the emails. Here's an example of the first email I sent out. We'll see how it's created later. Uh, it has some text. It, it has a reference to a date uh, and then it has the the normal content of the email, and then it has the reminder as attachment. In the second round, the one, the one that we just did with sent, um, the first reminder was due in February. I, I was running one for March again, so it picked it up a second time. And that means that the text is, a go, is going to be a, a bit more uh, strict, short, and professional, asking for, for prompt payment and we also included the open invoices in that email so that they can go and reference them and, and see what invoices were due in the batch job. But um, the difference in these two emails is from a new capability to tailor the, the emails per level in reminder terms. So we'll take a look at that now. 
So if you go to reminder terms, you have the, the standard list. Uh, in this uh, company, we have two reminder terms, one for domestic customers and one for foreign customers. The domestic reminder terms has a new setup window. You can turn on the, the new uh, feature, the new layout uh, in feature management, and you'll get to a, a card page that has both the header but also the, the levels. For the header, there really isn't uh, that many options. You could go and, and tailor emails if you had nothing else set up. I'll skip that part. The interesting part is you're sending out reminders in, at different levels. There's a first reminder, kindly asking the customer to, to pay as soon as conveniently. And then the second email where you remind them that they were reminded and please pay fast. And then maybe a third reminder that tells them that now they have to pay or, or the outstanding balance will be sent to a, a collection service or something like that. So you have these levels and you can set, it, set them up individually uh, with fees and uh, with the due date calculation for the reminder itself. But you can also click on the customer communication tab for each level. And the first one for level one that you saw an email for is that the email, is, the reminder itself, the attachment will have begin and, and ending text within it. That these two text fields, you can use them to build up a, a reminder report. But the email that you send out will have this text uh, referencing a, a, a due date and um, telling the customer if they already paid, they can disregard this email. So that's level one. And we'll just close it. For level two, they already got one reminder. So um, we are telling them that the, the payment was due and we would appreciate prompt payment and thank you for your business. We don't ask them to disregard anything because they already had a reminder that they didn't react to. And you can also include a, a subject line in the email. So you can construct or, or tailor the emails that you send out for the different reminder terms per level so it's, it gets more tailored to your business and the tone of voice and what you're asking for or what you're including. So in that way, you have a better setup for reminders and the levels for the emails that you send out. You can uh, choose to, uh, to send the attachment uh, along. You have automation to automate all of these steps. Once you have your setup and you decided how it should look like, uh, and be set up in terms of calculations. You can create automations that will take care of actually processing this. So all there is for you in collection management is to sit back and keep an eye on the KPIs because everything will be automated once you set it up. In the coming releases, we'll, we'll do a few more improvements, uh, some better overviews and some more KPIs, so it's easier to manage collection management. Thank you for watching this session.